Hey friends, Pastor Clay here coming to you from my office this afternoon. Uh, today during worship was an awesome and fun day full of all kinds of special music, but we did run a little bit of short of time and I did tell the congregation that I preached the short version of my sermon this morning, but the long version still exists and so I wanted to take a moment to share that with you. Uh, so thanks for tuning in um, to this sermon presentation. Our scripture this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 2. I'll be reading verses 8 through 20, and I read from the Good News Version, which is the version that we have in our pews, um, and just uh, invite you into God's Word today. <clears throat> there were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields, taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to the people. This very day in David's town your Savior was born, Christ the Lord. And this is what you will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away and went back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told them what the angel had said about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back, singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It had been just as the angel had told them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Holy and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be holy and acceptable to you. For you, O God, are our rock, and you are our Redeemer. And we give you thanks for who you are as we say together, Amen. So a fifth season episode of the TV show Scrubs, a show, by the way, which I would not have graduated college without, but a fifth season episode of the show Scrubs saw Carla Espinoza, the nurse, trying to rally the staff of Sacred Heart Hospital around the idea of their annual staff picture. And what we learn during the episode is that she has tried to accomplish this feat for several years with varying degrees of what I can only call unsuccess. In fact, the previous year's picture dwindled down to the point where it was only the boneheaded surgeon named the Todd and Carla, the nurse. This year, Carla tricked more of the staff into being a part of the picture, but it still wasn't great because there was one person left out, the janitor. And we learn throughout the episode that the janitor has been left out of every single staff picture. But this year, he had a plan. And that plan was simple. That plan was sabotage. What he does is he stakes a sort of spot on the very top of the hospital and he shines a mirror at the camera to overexpose the picture. He ruins all of Carla's hard work. And when the plot is revealed, Carla says the most important sentence in the entire episode. She says, why do you even care? You weren't even in the picture. Why do you care? You weren't even in the picture. And that's kind of the point. We learn that the janitor has wanted to be in the picture every single time. And every single time he has been left out. At the end of the episode, all is made right. The janitor is included. And the interesting thing is that the janitor goes all out. He does not show up in his usual janitor's uniform. He shows up in a suit and tie. And because the entire hospital is afraid of the janitor, the entire staff of the hospital shows up. And it turns into the best picture that they have ever taken. When I think about the shepherds, which is our focus for our scripture today, 
I picture them like the janitor in the TV show Scrubs. By the time of Jesus, the shepherds aren't really treated very well. Their job is hard. It's not respected. It's not a cushy or an easy job to have. Despite the fact that the greatest king in Israel's history started out life as a shepherd, they just don't value the shepherds. They're treated like the janitor at Sacred Heart Hospital. But yet, here they are, playing a pivotal role in the story. In the story of Jesus' birth. In the story of God taking on human flesh. Of God incarnating and choosing to dwell among us. When we started the season of Advent a few weeks ago, we started talking about the great mysteries of this Christmas story. The fact that Mary and Joseph are the ones who are selected to bring forth the Christ child. The fact that Jesus is born as a tiny human baby rather than as a conquering king. And here is one more great mystery. The shepherds. Why do the angels come to the shepherds? Are the angels aiming for someone more high profile and just missed? No. No, they're not. The great and joyous mystery of the Christmas story is this. Despite the fact that it would have been so easy to not include the shepherds, here they are. They're included. They're a part of it. They are shaken awake in their fields that night, and they're shaken awake with angel song and heaven's light streaming all around them. And how could they not be afraid? And once the angel started to give the news that they were all there for, how could they not be caught up in the excitement? Could they even begin to understand the enormity of what was going on? And how could they not be overwhelmed with joy? Here they were, frightened and frozen in place. And then they're all of a sudden, they're on this entirely new and exciting journey. All they know is that something exciting is happening, and the best part of all of it is that they're a part of it. And they want to know, know more, and they need to know more. I mean, think about how their dialogue is, is recorded in Luke chapter 2, verse 15. They say to one another, we've got to get going to Bethlehem. Let's go to Bethlehem and see that this thing that this has taken place that the Lord told us about. They can't wait till morning. They can't wait until the next shift of shepherds comes to take their spot. They are excited and confused. They are joyous and intrigued. And they just have got to get to Bethlehem right now. And don't get me wrong. The birth of Jesus is a reason to celebrate. The birth of any baby is a reason to celebrate. But the shepherds don't really know what it means yet. They may have some vague memory of a prophecy. They may hold on to some far-off hope of a redeemer. But even if they do have those things, the announcement of a baby was not what they had in mind. And the second part of it, the fact that they're included, is a good news that they don't even yet know. Because the baby in the manger is about to turn the world upside down. Whatever they may have learned about Messiah, they didn't learn that they'd be the first ones to know about him. Whatever they may have learned about Messiah, they did not know that this glorious announcement was going to be made not to emperors sitting on a throne, but shepherds in the fields. But they're there, and they're a part of it. And this is the joy of being included. This is the joy of the Christmas story. And Jesus would spread this same joy throughout his entire ministry. Throughout his entire life, beginning here at the beginning, Jesus' gospel story is a story that includes and centers and uplifts and celebrates people who would not maybe have automatically assumed that they had a place in the story to begin with. Jesus called disciples from relative obscurity rather than noted nobility. Jesus ate with sinners rather than the upright rulers. 
Jesus touched those that the world deemed untouchable. Jesus healed those that the world had written off. And Jesus even forgives the sins of a thief crucified next to him. Jesus spread this joy of inclusion everywhere. Everywhere he went, and he spread this joy to everyone with whom he interacted. And there's just so much joy in being included, isn't there? This is the joy that the janitor felt down at the bottom of his heart. This is the joy that motivated sleepy shepherds to go to Bethlehem. This is the joy that Mary felt as the shepherds told them everything they've experienced. This is the joy that made the, she the angels sing in the first place. And this is a joy that is available to you. This is the joy of the Christmas story, and it is for you. You are invited. You are included. You are a part of this story. The words that the angels sang to lowly shepherds generations ago are words that are for you. This is going to be news of great joy, the angels say. Great joy for you and good news for everybody else. This joy is for you. Without exception and without qualification. It does not depend upon your education or your achievements. It does not depend upon your job security, your bank account, or your marital status, or any other thing. This joy is just for you. Even if the world is not what you think it should be or even want it to be, and even if you're just in no mood for joy, and sometimes life is like that, and like, don't get me wrong, this is not a joy that's the same as our happiness. This is not a joy that says something good happened today that didn't happen yesterday. This is the joy that Jesus brought in the incarnation. And it is even bigger than one mere event. But I want to challenge you to ask yourself this question. What did the shepherds do with the joy that they felt? What did the shepherds do with the joy that they felt? Did they covet that joy and keep it for themselves? Or did they realize that this joy was too big not to share? Luke's gospel tells us that the shepherds could not keep this news to themselves. This was good news for them of great joy for all people. So they went and they told the Holy Family. They went and they talked amongst themselves. They went and they told even more people. This is what the joy of Jesus Christ should do. The birth of Jesus is good news of great joy for all people. For all people. And that was true with the shepherds then. That's true for us now and will continue to be true forever. The joy that Jesus brings into our lives is a joy that we feel from the very bottom of our hearts. And it is a joy that is begging to be shared and spread and proclaimed. So ask yourself, what is it that you will do with this joy that is yours? Would you pray with me? Jesus, we give you thanks for the gift of your life and for what that gift means to us as your people. Inspire us in these weeks leading up to Christmas to be those that will share your joy, a good news of great joy with all people. Open up avenues, open up hearts, even if that's our own heart, and just inspire us to become the shepherds, to run into the world and tell them of the great joy and good news that is found in you. We love you and we look to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for listening to this week's sermon from the Canton United Methodist Church. 
Join us in person or online at 10 o'clock every Sunday morning for worship. And now go in peace and serve the Lord. I want to encourage you after the message to head over to our YouTube channel and click the subscribe button. Over on YouTube, you will find videos of our entire worship service, a video cast of our weekly Cut for Time conversation with Pastor Clay and Eric, songs from our praise band One Way Up, and a bunch of other great things as well. Just search for Canton United Methodist Church. It would mean a lot to have you subscribe.